Let me point out some of the key uh, components here. This is the bracket. The bracket is generally held on by these three screws here, which should have spacers put on them so you can't overscrew them. I'll go in more, to that, in more detail into that later. This is the sensor, the all important piece right here. We're going to be getting into that later. Right now I'm just naming parts. Um, right here is the cold cathode tube. It's what, or a cold cathode fluorescent lamp. In DDR, they use regular fluorescent tubes, very similar, but they're a little larger, and there's two of them. This right here is the um, board that runs the lamp. Um, yeah, that's what it does. It registers the pad sensor hits to light these up. Those are the primary things for the pad you're going to need to know to fix this. So uh, now that we got this open, we're going to open up all the other panels uh, before we work on this, and we'll go into more detail of that later. See the interior of each aero cavity. What I'm going to do now really quick is we already went over what the major components inside the panel cavity itself are. I want to describe to a few players what some of the causes you might be experiencing while playing have relation to within the sensors or with the sensor with, with relation to the sensors in the brackets. Uh, three common problems players will have when they're playing are an arrow not responding well when touched. That usually happens if a light player is playing or somebody using the bar is playing where they're not putting a lot of pressure on the pad, but they should be putting enough pressure on it to register. That's an unresponsive arrow or a weak sensor is another phrase. Uh, the opposite of that problem is a sticky sensor or a stuck sensor. You, those are really noticeable if a heavy player is playing or somebody that doesn't use the bar, which that would be me. When I'm playing, It'll often happen because the, the arrow will get stuck and stay lit. It's very obvious. A little harder on In The Groove because when In The Groove is playing a song, it's pre-programmed light pattern, not registered to your feet. But in between the songs, however, you can test it by hitting the pad and seeing if it stays lit after your foot's been let, up, let go for a fraction of a second. If so, you probably have a sticky sensor. We'll cover that in a moment. The last thing is a ghosting sensor. This is really hard to pinpoint and it's odd, odd and almost random when you first see it, but what it is is when you're playing, the sensor will actually light up on its own without any uh, foot depression whatsoever. This is actually caused by a hypersensitive sensor, one that is actually feeling the vibrations in the pad, often caused by the player on the other side or from the other feet hitting the third, other three arrows. This might actually cause it to trigger. Uh, we actually have a video of this in, in, uh, in an example of how to identify it. We're going to show you that one, and uh, hopefully we'll get some video footage of a stuck sensor versus a non-reactive well, non sensor is just that. You know, it's not triggering, hard, triggering uh, when it should, and you can do Tom's pad test with the weight or the, the typical toe test to see if the sensor is bad to replace it. But that being done, let me show you the inside of the pad and what's responsible for each. Um, Almost universally, when you have a weak sensor, it's going to be two things. Either the sensor itself is dying and is getting old, or it isn't getting enough pressure applied to it. What you can do is, obviously, replacing a sensor, best option. Most of the time, that's not an available alternative, though, because the cost of sensors is, while not astronomically high, it's hard to get arcades to actually fund to replace them if, unless they're completely dead. So you can give extra life to a sensor by doing what's called the business card trick. The business card trick is quite easy. What you do is, let's just look at this pad here. This number's rubbed off, but this is an 8, an 8, and a 5. This is a weak sensor in relation to the others. It's 50% effective, relatively, based off our judgment. What we can do to improve the quality of this, if we don't want have the means to replace it, is by putting a business card. Take a business card and fold this lengthwise, in half or, I mean, there's no real rule to it. Just fold it over once or twice or maybe even tear it in half and fold it. You might not need an entire business card folded over. Just play with it. I would start with half a business card, put it in, and see if that helps. If it's perfect, leave it. If you need it to be a little more sensitive, increase it. But what you do is you take the business card, lift the bracket up. This bracket is what the panel hits to trigger the arrow. Well, right now we're not in the test mode. We'll get it into the test mode so you can uh, check it out real quick. Um, yeah, go ahead and hit enter on that. Let's see if we'll fast forward on this. There. So now you can see when the panel's on here and you press down, it pushes on this bracket, which pushes on the sensor, activating the trigger mechanism. What you can do is by putting a business card either here or some would say preferably under the sensor itself, but it's far easier to put it here. 
that what you do there is you give it a little bit more pressure from the, the bracket onto the sensor. You just you fill in the gap, if you will, making it a little bit more sensitive. Um, like again, more or less business cards might work better. That is how you can help alleviate the symptoms or the problems with a weak sensor. The next thing is a stuck sensor. Uh, as I said, the symptoms of this are you're playing, you hit an arrow, and you let off your foot, and it's still lit up like that. That's the, that's the symptoms in DDR. Um, you can identify it pretty easily by playing a song like Summer, or not Summer Speedy Mix, uh, Can't Stop Falling in Love Speedy Mix, or some songs that have really quick, quick rapid, successive hits, like 16th notes on one arrow repeatedly. Uh, the good way to identify it is simply if you know you're hitting it, but you're missing like two or three arrows in that set, it's probably because it's hitting it and then it gets stuck. And the reason why, one of the four set, uh, brackets almost all the time gets stuck holding it down. And after you hit on it a few times, it might pop it up, you know, making it available again. But, you know, you're still going to get a few pad misses. So one thing, the best solution we've found for fixing stuck sensors is to check the screws here, make sure they aren't overly tight, which on our machine we're fortunate that the spacers, you can see them right here under the screws, they're all intact. That prevents over tightening of the bracket. Uh, DDR machines, because of their age, they've had those things removed and reassembled so many times, I would bet half the time they don't have their spacers on there. Make sure you do not over tighten. The sensor bracket should have enough room to wiggle, but you don't want it to move this direction too much because if it does, it can just get off kilter and get in a stuck position. Uh, if you're still having problems, a good solution is just adding a little bit of WD-40 right here on the three, this area in here. And a DDR machine and an in-group machine are very similar. Just squirt a little WD-40 in there. If you can, get it on the inside. Uh, as far as our experiences go, we've had no ill effects from that and it at least alleviates the problem for a good week or two of pretty regular playing. Um, it might need continual maintenance, but you know, that's the way these machines work. Uh, the last issue I should mention is the ghosting issue. It's usually due to vibrations from the other side of the pad or the other arrows triggering a hypersensitive sensor. And um, I will show you a way to identify uh, later how to identify which sensor is likely the culprit. Once you've identified it, let's just pretend it's this inner one right here. Let's just pretend this guy is hyperactive. Uh, the reason that might be the case is because of various reasons. Tom pointed out to me that oftentimes these wires here, here's a good example over here. These wires are cramped. They're bent at more than a 90 degree angle right at the butt. Uh, you probably want to give them a little more space, such as this one over here. Or oftentimes, especially in DDR cabinets where they're old, the wires will have lost their insulation and might actually be touching each other, but it only happens once in a blue moon when the hits, when the, there's heavy hitting or something, making it appear like a random event. Check the sensors, make sure that the wires aren't stripped or that they're not touching each other or other metal, that's a key thing. Well, you know, if they're insulated, that's fine, but if they're, the insulation's stripped, put some electrical tape on it, make sure they're not touching any of that. Um, some other factors could be junk, which often piles up right here in between the sensor and the edge. There's often a lot of debris and dirt there. Ours is honestly not as bad as most will be. Um, but if you can clean that out, usually take a very small screwdriver. Yeah, this one looks pretty grody. Just dig it in there, take a shot back, and suck it out. That's what we're going to be doing to our pad today. Uh, you're going to want to do that you know, if it's building up, because again, that can cause debris to get in there, make it more pressure, and then bam, you got a hypersensitive sensor. Uh, the very last thing I can think of is um, the sensor itself over time. Typically, a sensor gets more malleable. The material starts bending and stuff, just like most things do, and it becomes more of more a malleable surface or structure. Um, most sensors get weaker over time as well. However, in a very rare cases, they stay sensitive while getting more malleable, making them hypersensitive. It's rare, but it happens. And we had that happen just the other day at a tournament where the sensor itself is still working in great condition, but you can tell it's old. It was bowed like that and just from pressing over years. If that's the case, there's a trick or two I got, like maybe trying to turn it so it's bowed under the sensor so it doesn't get as much pressure to it, but really the only thing you can do at that point is maybe replace it with another sensor. If you, again, are really strapped for sensors, put that sensor on the outside of the pad because the outside perimeter here, these sensors, 
they're always the ones that are least likely to get hit almost every time, and that's where you want to put your worst sensors. So that's that for symptoms.